Hello, everyone. We're just going to wait uh, a minute to let people uh, in, and then we will start. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second installment of our Demystifying Procurement and Diversifying the Supply Chain series. I am Sadin Sumare, the Executive Director of the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub at the Diversity Institute at Toronto Metropolitan University, which is formerly Ryerson University. I am excited to be joining all of you today. Please note, that this session will be recorded and a copy of the recording will be made available to all registered attendees in the following days. As well, if you would like to, uh, as well, uh, if you would like to listen to this um, session in French, please click on the interpretation button on the bottom right of your screen and select French. Before we begin, I would like to first and foremost acknowledge that the work we do takes place on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, which is now home to many diverse First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Our regional hubs and partners across Canada similarly gather on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations who have cared for these lands since time immemorial. In today's session, you will hear from our expert panel on the programs and services available from the federal government alongside exciting initiatives that could help women entrepreneurs interested in growing their businesses. I am pleased today to welcome Guylaine Carrière, who is the director of the Center for Agile and Innovative Procurements at Shared Services Canada. Hello, Guylaine. I'm also pleased to welcome Liana Guito, who is the advisor, supplier diversity, procurement at BDC. And finally, Molly Reutz, who is the associate assistant deputy minister for procurement branch at Public Services and Procurement Canada. Molly, and we can have them all. Can we pin them, please? Perfect. So let's begin, first of all, with a quick roundtable. Can you please introduce yourself? We want to hear from you and your organizations, and I will probably start with uh, Molly. So just a few words to introduce you. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Sabine, and thank you very much to the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub for inviting me. Uh, I am so pleased to be here today and to be part of this discussion about doing business uh, with the Government of Canada. Uh, the Government of Canada is committed to increasing access of women and other equity uh, deserving entrepreneurs to government procurement, and that means access to tools and opportunities. Uh, so before jumping into that discussion, obviously, I know you want me to just give a few things about myself and about the, about the organization. So um, I'm the newly appointed Associate Assistant Deputy Minister of Procurement at Public Services and Procurement Canada. 
I'm actually just over a month into the job. Um, and uh, my role together with two other assistant deputy ministers is to deliver the government's procurement agenda, including leading a program of $22 billion annually, which is about 79% of the government's annual spending. Uh, within my portfolio is Procurement Assistance Canada, which I'm looking forward to talking a little bit more about um, in the discussion as we go forward. I'm a career public servant with 22 years in government. Uh, my background prior to PSPC includes roles at the executive level um, at the Department of National Defense, the Treasury Board Secretariat, the Privy Council Office, and Northern Affairs. I started as an intern at Canada's Embassy in the United States, and I actually joined government through um, a, a recruitment program at National Defense for Policy Officers. And I participated in several women's networks um, and mentorship programs, and I'm deeply committed to diverse and inclusive public service. And I'm really excited to extend my support and energy uh, to, diverse, to increasing diversity and inclusion in government procurement. And I'm just really looking forward to the discussion and also hearing from my, uh, from my two colleagues in government today. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Molly, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, Guylaine, just a few words. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today, like yesterday. So, um, so I'm Guylaine Carrier, I'm the proud director of the Center of Expertise in Agile and Innovative Procurement. And really my job is to push the boundaries, to, you know, to navigate the machine, to make procurement more effective, efficient. And recently we worked a lot to improve access of underrepresented groups, including women's led and women owned type of things. About myself, I'm somebody that is, I'm an engineer by trainings. I am driven by results and motivated by people. I like to push the boundaries in my organization. I'm not always the most popular person because I'm saying, okay, we can do better. Let's go, 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 go. And you know, that's driving the agenda of, come on, we can do better. So that's a bit of what I'm thrilled about. And thank you very much for inviting me. It's very, um, uh, nourishing for, for myself to hear others' perspective. And we always learn from each other and working with, with people or organization like yours is, is very uh, rewarding. Thank you very much. That, that reminds me that it's much better to let you speak instead of having me reading your bio. So thank you for this go, go, go. <laughs> Liana, over to you. So uh, thank you for having uh, me today. And I'm happy to be here with uh, my colleagues as well. So Liana Gito, I work at BDC as a supplier diversity advisor. So BDC is a business development bank of Canada dedicated to small, medium sized entrepreneurs. Um, so I have been working at BDC. It's been uh, 11 years. <laughs> Every time I try to remember for how long it's been, because it's felt that well, it's actually felt shorter than 11 years, to be honest. I've been working specifically in procurement for about nine, we'll say, and um, so I've been working on the supplier diversity program since it began and it's and now we're in our third year or well third year that it's officially launched and procurement. So my job is really to uh, go out on the market, identify um, diverse entrepreneurs who can respond to our needs and really help try to coach them and guide them in how to do business with BDC. Uh, and it's really a pleasure to be here. And also, like you then said, we do always learn from each other and during these conversations. So I'm excited to hear what we're all up to today. <laughs> We will definitely learn, and the audience, I'm sure, will do so. Um, Molly, um, I'm sure you know, procurement in general is not well understood and is not on the radar of women entrepreneurs. Uh, and you've mentioned you're an advocate on that regard in terms of supporting uh, uh, diverse uh, entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. So what kind of support should women entrepreneurs expect from Public Services and Procurement Canada? to actually help them navigate uh, the, the big machine, as mentioned by um, Guylaine. You, you're still muted. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, so thanks very much uh, for the question. So PSPC, uh, we have our, our policy on social procurement, which came into effect in May, 2021 with the objective of making systemic changes to how we approach procurement. The policy specifically looks uh, at the area of best value uh, by facilitating the inclusion of socioeconomic measures into PSPC's procurements. Uh, it enables us to gather data on suppliers' personal information, for example, gender, racial identity, person with disability, 
LGBTQ+, um, et cetera, so we can make evidence-based decisions on how to support the diversity of suppliers. We need to know who our suppliers are so we can ensure that our supplier base is representative of Canadian society. Uh, this, this policy is part of that, the framework for our soon to be launched supplier diversity program. And it's part of what had been previously a supplier diversity action plan. As a good government, we have an action plan, a policy, and now a program. <laughs> so um, anyway, we, we've also done some experimenting, as some of you may be aware in this space, um, as we've been developing the program. So in January 2021, we launched a Black Businesses Procurement Pilot. The pilot specifically targeted 12 procurements across Canada to Black businesses. Um, other than Indigenous businesses, this was in fact the first time that we had targeted a specific, a specific equity and deserving group in a bid, um, in a bid or solicitation. Uh, so we're soon going to be launching our supplier diversity program, which is actually going to be laying out how we how to leverage procurement to increase the diversity of our supplier base and to create opportunities for women and other equity deserving entrepreneurs. Um, this program is going to help our, us identify approaches for procurement to promote direct benefits, so specifically where procurements are awarded to companies owned or managed by equity deserving groups, as well as indirect benefits such as subcontracting opportunities or social benefit plans. We're really excited about the opportunities that this will create, uh, but are also open to ongoing engagement on what more we can do uh, and how to improve in this space. Uh, sort of key next steps that I would highlight um, include uh, directing business activ activity that are below sort of trade agreement thresholds, uh, reformulating procurements to unbundle requirements, removing barriers uh, to facilitate increased participation, uh, and promoting self-identification in our system so that we can begin the data collection that I already talked about to know the makeup of our supplier base. So that's sort of a, an overview of sort of the policy area. And I can talk a little bit more of the services um, as we go along in the discussion. Thank you. That, that's perfect, Moody. And I also want to encourage the audience to ask question in the Q&A uh, in the Q&A section. So please uh, function. So please uh, do so. We will discuss a lot of different programs and initiatives. So if you have any questions, feel free. The, uh, our panelists will answer. So now over to you, Guylaine. Uh, you are leading uh, a very recent uh, center of expertise in agile and innovative uh, procurement. Uh, I was not aware of this center before. So I wonder if you can just explain the mandate and explain the mission of, of the center and how it will benefit women entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. So the center of expertise mandate is uh, to leverage uh, this innovative uh, type of procurement that we name agile procurement uh, to create internal effectiveness, you know, increase uh, inclusions in procurement uh, to be more nimble, flexible in order to build some procurement uh, that could adjust to change. Um, so we've been testing a model that we call agile procurement process 3.0 uh, over the last uh, two years got uh, a lot of good feedback. And recently uh, the president st stated that we are mo moving out of uh, prototype and we are moving to deploy, we're going to deploy APP 3.0. Mm -hmm. But I guess what is more relevant to this audience and I would like to say is we designed this new, that this social procurement initiatives that we call scale up. And I think the audience will find interesting how, how it started seven. So I, I, I was working with the vendor association technician and on APP 3.0 to see because, okay, how best we can rethink the procurement. So not just, you know, us government in our uh, silo. So we always do work with all the stakeholders to say, okay, so how could we do that together? And uh, a Sunday she sent me a post and that was the, about the she session. And I was touched. I said, it was talking about how women were suffering under the COVID. And I said, I called her, I said, hey, we need to do something. So what we did is a technician at their digital marketplace, and we are looking to, you know, design this social procurement. So if we join forces and we design scale up. So how it works under scale up is uh, underrepresented groups could participate to government procurement. It's for contracts below 238 so 238K. And our way of doing that is we first outreach them and say, okay, what are your most main problems? 
And what uh, they told us is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you improve, you simplify procurement, but it's still very complicated. So our job and our mission is to simplify procurement. So far, we, we got a lot of pleasure and a, a good results working with the underrepresented groups. And what are we buying? Right now under the pilot, because we've been gotten, you know, we have this one year type of pilot and what we are buying is IT related goods and services. As an example, uh, the first contracts were about learning designers. So to uh, gamification expert, because I'm redoing the training and I got those fantastic people. I found never got a contract with the government for that first time. And uh, so just now we just add the bid on the phone because come on, we can do this. So this is the type of commodity we're having. So if I were like your audience, like looking for where to start, I've never dealt with Government of Canada contracting. We are accompanying um, the vendors. I will stop there because I know I will have uh, other uh, chance to explain how that works, but essentially this is what we do and offer. And, and you know, I would also mention that you mo you do modernize. It's also modernizing. I've, I've, I've heard that it's on your website. So I also want to, uh, stress that so it's uh, it's a question of making it accessible for everyone to do business with uh, the government. So I guess Liana um, BDC uh, has been doing a lot uh, in terms of supplier diversity, and you were the first one, if I'm not mistaken, to have a diversity a supplier diversity program. So um, What's, what's the impact on women entrepreneurs? And can you give us some examples of uh, what you've heard uh, from, from, from women entrepreneurs? Absolutely. So um, there have been impacts from like with our Supplier Diversity Program and working with women entrepreneurs. Um, we've had opportunities with like uh, Azra, what our program that they've, we've coached them on things and guide them on how to respond to RFPs. Uh, even when we're meeting them at round tables, we kind of like give them guidance on how to pitch um, when they're when they're trying to work with us. Another thing we did is when we saw that we started giving mandates to women entrepreneurs, they were able to use BDC uh, as one of their clients. So it was like giving them credibility and they were able to use it as leverage to then go work with other uh, crown corporations. So for example, there was one e-learning uh, content entrepreneur that we worked with um, that was a woman owned company. So after having a mandate with us, and they've done a lot of our training that has to do with on bdc.ca, they've worked on the marketing fundamentals, which is accessible to all of our entrepreneurs. They've also done training courses uh, for all of BDC employees as well. And they were able to use this when going to another crown corporation saying like, here, I have experience working with um, a crown corporation. I've been having success and it's and you could see the training. So it was something that gave them credibility. So we saw it helping their business grow. And even when I spoke to them recently, they said that because it was going so great on their end that they decided to then buy the second floor above them to increase their business. So by having these programs and giving visibility to these women entrepreneur, it, it makes them grow. It gives them chances to have bigger contracts or even sometimes contracts that's small, that start small just to get an idea of how the government works and then it can slowly but surely increase and then after that it it just it things come to fruition after working with the the government because you can see that they have the experience so it's it's always an eye opener for a lot of people it's all about the experience definitely and and i guess molly uh for you so what 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 type of programs uh are available that are more geared towards women owned businesses or equity deserving groups in entrepreneurship so I want to talk a little bit about Procurement Assistance Canada, which was created as part of Public Services and Procurement Canada to assist smaller and diverse businesses navigate the federal procurement process, which I think we've, uh, we've all been underscoring here how, how complex that can be. Uh, so Procurement Assistance Canada has six regional offices across Canada, um, including Quebec, Ontario, um, and uh, the National Capital Region. Uh, Procurement Assistance Canada offers webinars, a national helpline, um, and personalized one-on-one -on -one support. It also organizes larger conference types of events, such as there was one held this week in the National Capital Region Office, which I'm sure several of the uh, women in this organ or in this uh, audience today may have attended. Um, uh, moreover, it's creating services to focus uh, that focus on specific aspects of the procurement journey. 
Um, for example, uh, we've recently launched a coaching service, which is aimed at diverse firms uh, who have previously bid in a government uh, procurement opportunity. Um, and the, the coaching service um, is a formalized program that helps increase a business's confidence in the ability to bid. We actually piloted this uh, particular service with female-owned businesses um, and uh, the, our, our minister actually recently met and received some excellent feedback on our coaching uh, program um, from the members of that particular uh, pilot who shared their experiences both with the pilot, but also on, on working uh, with the government in the procurement process. Um, procurement Assistance Canada works to help every company, um, you know, become bid ready, uh, as both of my colleagues have just been talking about, um, which, which among other things, um, means the business, uh, you know, is ready to, on how to bid, uh, how to jump on the opportunities as they arise, uh, and which departments and agencies um, would buy their goods and services. Um, so the, the Procurement Assistance Canada folks are there to sort of help you navigate that particular process. And um, I believe uh, we have the website link has been put into the chat here today. So I encourage everybody uh, to check it out and to, to reach out um, and seek support from the services that are there. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Uh, and we'll dig a little bit more with, um, with Guylaine in terms of creating awareness and helping women entrepreneurs. So uh, what else do you think could be done actually to raise awareness and help women entrepreneurs register and ultimately win bids? So I would say that the work and, uh, that uh, Procurement Assistant is doing to support uh, uh, underrepresented group is great. Uh, they are one of the partner on the scale up. Um, so th this, this accompaniment, you know, if, if you are um, like scale up is open to on um, micro and small enterprises. So if you have less than 100 employees, you don't have the time to try to understand how do I do that registrating and all that. So, you know, this accompaniment of trying to understand the machine that uh, procurement and uh, assistance Canada is doing is great. It's definitely a, a great contributing factors. What we observe is makes the difference uh, to for for women's own or you know people for bidding is understanding how to bid. I mean, if you look at the a traditional procurement, it's all in written elements. So the way we transformed that is we try to reproduce a more natural context. So on the scale up, is we say okay, so you have an auto fillable type of forms, but you say have you done this? This is what you're gonna do under the resulting. Call. Have you done that? And uh, through the webinar, you have access to the technical authority. If you put yourself in a natural environment and you want to apply a job, you say, hey, talk to me about this. You want to have access to the person you would work with. So we try to reproduce that so people understand. We also offer one-on-one. -on -one. So for bid on the phone, as an example, oh, yeah, we were having looking for an accessibility expert. So we, we met the people and they were trying, never dealt with the government of Canada. So they were having access to the experts and being able to, you know, how do I register and how do I, so they were able to understand, to prepare themselves and therefore their investment of level of effort is, you know, it's, it's like duplicate their chances of winning the contracts. The other thing I want to say to your audience is start by something small. Having your first contract, I mean, of course, I will do the, the, the publicity for my thing, but scale up will give you the opportunity to, to, to come in like even a small contract will let you see how the government of Canada works. And after that, you will, you will start understanding that will prepare you for potentially a more bigger thing. So there to start small, that would be my thing. But I guess my question to you, what, what, what does it look like a small contract? Like, how would you define a small contract? Uh, the, the value for us, it's 238K, but it could be like, we started for the gamification expert, we started with, I, I don't remember the initial value, that was low, you know, the value, the contract value was low. Start working with them, and we were having a scalable mechanism in the contract. So we can say, okay, so now you, we understand your world, and then rapidly or incrementally, we work with them to grow, to grow that contract. So a small contract for us, for a, uh, a woman that, let's say I'm, I'm going out for an accessibility expert. This is, I'm, I'm working on something on this right now. Mm -hmm. So I will go out and so we'll say, okay, come, even though if you have a small 20, 50K contract, it's not big, but at least you will start seeing how the government of Canada works. You will be registered. 
And now we have an association with, you know, um, the security, um, je me souviens plus de leur nom, Secu the, the one that gives the security clearance at PSPC. And so they accepted to work with us in collaboration to facilitate the, the obtention of the security clearance. Mm -hmm. It's another process that could be really, you know, cumbersome and stuff to understand what you have to provide, and, et cetera. So, yes, I, I hope I replied to your question or I replied you to did. No, you definitely did. I, I think it's important to just make sure people, when, when you say small, what does it look like? Because the perception or, or, or the, uh, uh, yeah, it could be different, right? So you, you you put an amount and the amount makes a difference because someone may say, okay, so a small will be for me, I don't know, 20, 20K, right? 50K. So how do you measure that? Or what, how do you feel you're ready to bid? I guess that was also my question there. Yeah. And I guess my last point, if you have less time to invest, you know, of course you don't, you won't invest 100 hours to bid on a 20K contract, right? Makes no sense. But if you just have to invest one or two hours plus one interview on a 25K country, I mean, you have big chance of having your first step as working with government of Canada. I think it's a great transition. It's a great baby step. Baby, baby step. Um, Liana, so in terms of the process, I guess the question is really going, uh, it's a follow up on what I just uh, asked you, Guylaine. What is the process for obtaining contracts with the BDC uh, more particularly? And do you have any advice for women entrepreneurs who want to do business with you, with your organization? Absolutely. So uh, to start off, for us to be able to do contracts with a women entrepreneur, we need to know who you are. So mm -hmm. that's why on our website, bdc.ca slash supplier, we have, there's a portal that you can go register. So we ask that suppliers go register and then ask you questions on like what type of services that you can do. Uh, if you're diverse uh, and all that. So whenever we do have procurement opportunities, we do go visit that registration form to see uh, who, like, who are the diverse entrepreneurs that we can invite to our opportunities. Another thing is that when we go to events, so there's a lot of events that are held by certification councils or even um, different groups. So we go to those events and they're round tables that we participate in. Those are key moments to start getting to know different organizations, not just BDC, because uh, at those events, you'll always have like other organizations such as um, like an EDC or Walmart or they're all around the table. So those events are really when you can go and meet procurement uh, individuals or heads of procurement to talk to them about your business. And when you meet those, those um, procurement um, individuals, it's very important to exchange information I'm saying this because you can't just think that once we network and we get to know each other and then after that we go about our ways, take our information, send us an email with your capability statement because that is one thing that is really important to us because we often take that capability statement and then we'll go talk to the line of business and then we'll say like, hey, we, have, we met this entrepreneur, they can do the business, let's have an introductory call. And even I would say it's important to follow up because uh, I've been in calls where we spoke to entrepreneurs and they... Sometimes it's like, and I know like it's like a very important thing I'm going to tell to everybody. Uh, it's not night, like the day after we meet you that we're going to sign a contract. It takes time. So I've met entrepreneurs where they say they've done follow-ups for like maybe a year, two years. We have to keep in mind that a lot of us have contracts with other suppliers that is for a year or two years or three years. So we can't just change the suppliers, but it's super important to keep you, uh, to keep the entrepreneur like top of mind. So that's why if you follow up, uh, even sending like a, a Christmas card. It sounds weird, but it's it's just keeping the relationship alive, asking us where, where what's going on at BDC, what's going on, um, what projects you have upcoming, getting to know us, creating that relationship, uh, learning about us, showing us what's going on in your your company. So it's, it's really having to build a relationship to eventually then work with us. So then after that, you can get to know us and learn what our requirements are, ask us questions along when can I follow up with you? What what can we do? What is it that you look for when it comes to your type of services? What are the requirements? So this way we can give you feedback and guidance on how you can, I'm going to use the words of Guilain, scale up. <laughs> I'm going to plug in her little advertising moment, scale up. <laughs> <laughs> scale up is a real thing. Um, yeah. what, but, but what kind of service do you usually see or what kind of service can an entrepreneur sell to BDC? So that's a great question. So on our site, uh, we do have a document that it says, what is BDC buy? So you'll see all the types of services that we buy. Um, so that's like high level gives you the different categories. But a lot of what we've seen, when we were looking at our past numbers is we do a lot of 
to a lot of doing and provide uh, advisory services and consulting services. Mm -hmm. So like staff augmentation, uh, we have also a lot in technology. So anything to do with hardware, uh, software, even integrator integrators as well. And even in marketing, that's like our biggest three categories of where our major majority of our spend is, but we do have other categories as well that are smaller mandates, which can also be a possibility. Oh, perfect. So, and I guess this can be found in your, in your website, right? Yes. So on our website, we have the list of all of the, our, the types of services we offer, but the main three categories that I mentioned are where you'd see uh, the larger amounts where we spend. Perfect. Um, and, and Molly, uh, over to you. I, I know you have uh, mentioned uh, that you have more specific program for Aboriginal people. So what makes, what makes it different from other uh, programs? So in August 2021, the government of Canada announced a mandatory target to have 5% of federal contracts awarded to Indigenous businesses. Uh, this is part of the Government of Canada's uh, broader objective of Indigenous economic reconciliation and, uh, and aims to ensure that we are increasing opportunities for Indigenous, indigenous businesses and moving towards improving socioeconomic conditions. Um, as part of these efforts, uh, we are working with Indigenous Services Canada and to increase Indigenous business capacity. Uh, through Procurement Assistance Canada's dedicated services. Uh, so recently we hit an important milestone uh, with the release of guidelines um, for Treasury Board mandatory procedures for contracts awarded to Indigenous businesses, which have come into effect. And PSPC is now supporting this by developing procurement strategies, guidance and tools for the procurement community. Um, so obviously more information is available um, through Procurement Assistance Canada, but this is a really important government um, objective and, uh, you know, something that we are, you know, very much committed to, to delivering because we, we understand that the power of, of procurement in these in terms of providing access to markets. So, uh, um, yeah, so thanks very much. Thank you. Um, and and Gillen, uh, we've mentioned raising awareness among women to register and eventually win bids. So now you also have the role of reducing barriers. How can the process be made easier? And what difference does it make when submitting the re a request for proposal on RFP? So, you know, when, when you work for Chair Service Canada, you, you, tend, you, you tend to think about, okay, so the life of the Canadians, what are they? The life of the Canadian is you do everything on your cell phone. And um, since the beginning, I said, how come we cannot bid on the, our work phone? How come we, come on, we are SSC. How come we cannot bid? So what we are doing, it's an example of, we want to push the boundaries of the simplification so the, the bidders can actually, you know, can bid on their phone, can have access to a more natural bidding process. This is one. Second, there's a lot of things that the government of Canada does in writing. In writing, it's good and it's interesting. It's, it's a very good practice for mitigating the risk, totally get that. But the natural way of things is, and what we test under APP 3.0 and under scale up is we replace the written bid with interactions. So agile means you favor interactions over documentation. So instead of writing a long bid, you know, spending times of writing a bid, we invite you to a demonstration. You have some instructions, or a use case or something to demonstrate with publish evaluation grid, that's, that remains, it's a procurement process, but at least you can pitch you, what you have and <clears throat> we scored you on this. So that's, those are two elements that could simplify the life. Third, having access to the technical authority. Mm -hmm. That's another way to simplify the life of, uh, of underrepresented groups that doesn't have the time to spend hours to understand what Canada works and how they can become compliant bidders. Finally, the fact that we joined forces with technician is we added a channel for the bidders to be, uh, to be aware of the business opportunities. For anybody to have to navigate the buy and sell ocean and finding something that as a new vendor you can bid on, it's something. So we joined forces because when you are registered, with keywords self-identify. When we have a scale up, we have we do through a search, 
and technician will contact you and say, oh, by the way, that fits your profile. So you will not, yes, of course, you can go and buy a set, but you can also be notified or be informed that potentially there's something that fits your capabilities. Okay, so that's a way to make it very easy. And, and that's obviously in both languages across Canada, and it's free. Correct. Wonderful. And, and you've mentioned, I, I guess you've mentioned there is an app that, or, or it's just a website, just on the website. Sorry, for, for is, is, is the is the bid can be done like on a website or do, did you develop a specific uh, app, an application? So happy you asked me the question. So it's a uh, part of agile procurement is we post a problem. And uh, so right now it's a pilot. So we on scale up, we said, we have this problem. We need to bid on the phone. We pre-qualified four underrepresented groups vendors. Uh, they now they passed the first prototype that was, are you able to satisfy the minimum viable requirements for the bin on the phone, all four passed. Now they are in prototype two and we check if their web app for bidding on the phone could satisfy official language and accessibility requirements. And after that, we'll pick one and we'll configure that during a year. And after that year, if it's beneficial, then we will do a business case with that to say, okay, we can do this. So that's a bit of bid on the phone. So it's, it's in development right now. And we will invite you to present the app once it's all developed and ready. What about that, Gillian? Oh, so fun. You have no idea, but I, I, I keep <laughs> You seem very proud about this project, and we're, we're happy to hear that. And we can we look forward to having more, uh, hearing more from you on, on that project. Um, and thank you for Gillian. Uh, Liana, so I know your programs uh, focus on the impact on women entrepreneurs, and we've mentioned that. So can you share success stories? I'm sure you've heard a lot, uh, and you should be proud of, you know, having success stories from BDC. So share some with us. Absolutely. So when we actually, so just to start off, like when we're looking at like our last year, um, the last fiscal year results, um, we had signed Eight, around eight million dollars with women entrepreneurs so that's like great news which should show that we worked with also uh, 80 around 80 uh, women entrepreneurs as well and then when we're looking at our success stories so there was one that um, it always comes to mind because it's it's the one that I've seen um, around BDC that most most were shocked because Oftentimes we're trying to talk about like hey let's like diversify our supply chain you're talking about it internally most people think that diverse entrepreneurs are like small entities, which sometimes they are, but other times like, we see like the bigger women entrepreneurs or um, we see other diverse groups. So we had one that we went out to the market for, it was for our identity access management solution. So when you hear that, most people will think hey, it's gonna go one to like one of the big four uh, who usually do these types of uh, RFPs. And it was actually surprising to see that there was a woman entrepreneur who bid it on it. It was their bread and butter. I am was what they knew. They were amazing. And during that whole like RFP process, the presentation, and they showed us like, you just saw that they knew what they were talking about. Everyone across the, uh, around the room was just like, yeah, I don't know. I want, I want them. <laughs> like, this is who I want on my mandate. So uh, we had signed the contract with them and we were implementing our identity access management. It's going very well. So that's one of our access success stories it's um it's going really well and it's one of our major critical solutions as well so that's really exciting to see another thing what we did as well during the pandemic was we had to purchase ppe equipment so what we decided to do is mainly just focus on finding diverse suppliers who could respond to these needs so we went out to an rfp just for that so we looked at who are uh, women entrepreneurs or any uh, entrepreneurs from underrepresented groups so they helped us in providing us with actually one of like our PPE equipment and it was surprising it was not surprising enough but like they actually had better PPE equipment than we've seen from other organizations that weren't diverse so it was hmm. we were like it's it's a no-brainer uh other things that we did so on our facility side so we have contracts where we work for uh, whenever there's problems inside um our buildings that we need to fix maintenance so we decided to do an RFP for that and we invited, we mainly tried to invite only diverse. We had also our incumbent that we had to invite and we had ended up signing a contract with a woman entrepreneur who was also uh, certified with a WB, I think it was WB and LG, uh, CGLCC. So that was another success story that we have and the facilities department is working with them and it's all, it's going great as well. Uh, so we have success stories going all around and we like, we're really happy to see that as like their program is progressing, we're having more and more stories and we're seeing more and more success. And it's eye-opening to everybody across BDC because it broke that 
initial thought that it's a mom and pop shop so it, it really broke those those minds not like are those perceptions or those um what they originally thought those biases right. so now they're like no no let's include more diverse like they're changing the way of thinking they're it's more innovative they they really open the eyes to us so it, it's great and we, we love sharing these success stories because I mean what better way to break those barriers than to share the the great success that we're doing and and we have so at the uh, at the women entrepreneurship knowledge hub we started a campaign to uh, fight these stereotypes and, and biases. And we have a, a database with over 1,000 women entrepreneurs, successful women entrepreneurs in different stages in their businesses. And we showcase them. And I would love to have these stories in our database, in our website to showcase these fantastic uh, women entrepreneurs. So we'll, we'll be in touch, uh, Liana, and, and, and try to add them in this um, database. But I guess I have one follow-up question for you. You've mentioned certification. How does it make a difference to be certified as a women entrepreneurs to, so, to win a bid? So what we do, so when we, because so certification does guarantee to us that that company is owned and managed by one of the underrepresented groups. So we do really do look at certification on that side. But what we had started doing on what uh, during our program is we said, we'll look at the ones that since we also work with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, like being a bank for uh, entrepreneurs and helping them grow with financing service advisory services. So we said, we'll look at the entrepreneurs that we know are diverse. Um, and then what we're gonna do is eventually talk to them about certification. Cause there are a lot of benefits that come when it comes with certification, besides the fact that for us, it gives us a level of comfort, but there's benefits in the sense that that certification gives them access to other businesses as well. Those events, uh, they organize them yearly. You have, uh, you go in person and you you oftentimes see that even some companies, they'll talk to each other and they're able to team up and bid on a contract for like a major organization. So it's another way that they can have a bigger mandate is by, by partnering up the diverse entrepreneurs. You have access to all the procurement heads. So you basically can talk to them, tell them about your business, like talk, and it's like really what it is. Like actually one of the successors I can give you is one of our clients that we brought to this event. It was a woman entrepreneur. For the longest time, they were trying to like sell their product to a retail store. They kept going to their local retail store. It was not working. And they kept saying like, okay, hey, how can I do this? We brought them to the event and they were able to talk to the head of that retail store that was across the, actually was international. And the person's like, here's my information. Send me an email. Let's start talking. And they were able to start having serious conversations about getting their product on the shelves. So that's why these the, by have, getting a certification or by participating in these events, it opens doors. And there's also training opportunities as well. I feel like I'm selling certification right now. I should probably and go work important. for one of them. <laughs> I probably should go work for one of the councils, but if they really also give training. So like they give you training on maybe marketing or how you can do like what type of financing you have. Like they, they do trainings on everything and you can go check on like all of their websites. They have trainings happening every month on different things, depending on the certification council you're part of. Okay, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I have another follow-up question on don't that. Don't worry. <laughs> audience, I don't see question in the Q&A and I do have question because now that you mentioned that resources, where can you find these organizations? Can we find a list? And that not specifically for you, Liana, but any, anyone wanna answer that question? Where can we find this list of organizations providing certification? Is there a place where we can find out? So. I, I can go again if, uh, if you guys want. So if we're looking specifically only at women in Canada, there is the We Be and We Connect that, uh, that, that certify for women. Uh, and if anyone's located in Montreal, there is Réseau des Femmes d'Affaires du Québec, who also you can talk to them and they can even help guide you on which one to, to get certified with. Uh, and if we're looking at other groups like Indigenous, so Indigenous would be under CAMZ or CCAB in Canada. And for LGBTQ, Q businesses, it will be under uh, CGLCC. And lastly, there's IWSCC for veterans and persons with physical disabilities. There's also okay. other ones in the States, but I'm mainly focusing on the Canadian certification. Okay. And Guylaine or Molly, if you have any other ones that I missed, please do not hesitate to add. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liana, for, for that. I guess, yeah, we're all good. So. Uh, I will just, before we wrap up, I want to hear from you, Molly. Do you have an, an advice, any advice for women entrepreneurs who want to do business with the government? I, I think you have mentioned some of them, but just to summarize, 
before before we we uh oh we do have question from the q a so yes go ahead and then we'll go to the q a oh okay perfect so uh thanks very much so yeah i just uh i guess just just a one point to make in terms of the the last conversation so thanks to to liana for for providing that list i we we certainly um, are looking at options from a certification perspective for the for going forward, but for for now, the focus for us is self identification. So we encourage our suppliers to self identify as they're in the in the procurement uh, process, and um, you know for us that's extremely important, particularly you know as we move forward from a from our data gathering standpoint. In terms of um, some sort of further areas, just to kind of highlight. Um, you know, I, I think that um, as both Guylaine and Liana have done a, an amazing job here today, and I've just been uh, very struck by their enthusiasm and, and the great work that, that they're doing in this in this area. Um, I just think it's extremely important uh, for women entrepreneurs, in particular, to to engage. Um, you know, reach out to us, and uh, hopefully, the three of us have helped to demystify a little bit. I know the government is daunting. Um, we have pretty rigid processes. Um, you know, it's 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 you know a somewhat um, an interesting phenomenon that the, the very things that we have in place to encourage openness, transparency, and fairness can in fact create barriers, which we recognize. Uh, so this is something that you know we're very much committed. Uh, to ensuring that we provide these opportunities for access. We understand the power um, you know, that, that we have in terms of from a government procurement perspective, in terms of what we can do, both um, in terms of providing those socioeconomic opportunities, but also the benefit to Canada and Canadians. And I think um, both Guylaine and Liana have given some excellent examples today um, you know, of some women's businesses and also other equity deserving groups um, who have uh, provided you know, really meaningful contributions to, to the government and to Canadians through their work. Um, so I know there's just so much more opportunity out there and I encourage folks to reach out look for those opportunities, um, you know, anything we can do also to increase visibility and awareness. Um, so you talked, uh, Sabine, about your own website and highlighting women's um, businesses and success stories. Um, you know, we we look to do that as well as the government of Canada, but the, any anything that the network can do to kind of increase that visibility as well, I think is extremely important. Um, you know, and for us, we, we are in the development of our program stage. We're experimenting. We're trying new things. Uh, we're not going to get it all right, uh, but we really want to hear from folks in terms of how, how it's going, uh, looking for ideas, uh, open to improving. We're simplifying how we do business. Uh, we're trying to say, I mean, Guylaine talked about simplifying the bid processes, trying new ways of doing bidding. Uh, we're doing that as well. And, uh, you know, the, the teams are extremely committed to trying new things and, you know, just very passionate about what we're doing in this, in this area. It's just a smart thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, both, uh, you know, I think that I just would encourage, um, you know, encourage women entrepreneurs to, to, you know, reach out to us, engage us. Uh, we want to hear from you and, uh, you know, we really do want uh, to see success in this area and are very committed to doing that. So I really appreciate the opportunity, uh, you know, to meet all of you today. And it's been great to meet two uh, great female colleagues here from the government of Canada and uh, just looking forward to, um, you know, to, to further work in this space. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. And we will definitely invite you next year because I feel like every year we need to refresh people what is new, what is happening and what has changed. So, uh, yeah. Stay, stay tuned. Guylaine, last word before we go to the, the Q&A portion of. So, yes, and thank you very much for, for this invitation. That, that has been amazing. And uh, I would like to let you with a small story that uh, we got on the scale up. So we got the gamification experts and you know how we increase access and how we increase the level of opportunities for small businesses. Some things often we discover by experimenting. So what happened in that story? And now we are developing the agile procurement immersive experience. So there will be a game that people will do. And we do that with them. They are very good. And one of the things that I said that usually when you have a contract, you just have the logo of the government of Canada. But because that will be seen by all the other government departments, I want them to be known. Uh, so it's, it's a small thing. Like giving access or giving some visibility to small and medium enterprise in their results that of course would be the property of government of Canada 
but it's also another mechanisms that can make them known. And just recently, a colleague from Radio Canada called me, he said, Glenn, that's interesting, so blah, blah. And I put them into contact and I, I know, I'm not sure if they will do something together, but at least there's something. So th that's, the, I, I feel that my, my what, what is driving me is this collaboration, the experimentations, there's so much that is getting out of it when we work together with the contractors, not only, uh, you know, by the contractor or, or you know from i mean you know what i mean my english is not going so well but it's perfect yeah, yeah. So thank you working. thank you for sharing that Gillen. thank you for sharing that um okay we have nine minutes left and i want to make sure we cover the questions from the audience so one question um if we are already certified diverse suppliers through cglcc or we or we be are we automatically on your diverse supplier list or do we need to register directly with you? And there is not specific, I don't know if it's specifically for one person, but who want to answer that one? It, it might be when I was talking before, <laughs> it might be on me. Uh, so we do have access to those lists uh, that we are members of the certifying councils, but I still would say to go register on uh, our website as well, because that is really where we go look first. And it's, it's not even just for myself, it's uh, whenever you're working with different companies. So uh, they all, like when you go on their website, usually they mainly have their own portal where they have uh, questions that they ask about the supplier. Because this also gives us opportunities to really single out or understand what your industry sector is. So then when we're going for those opportunities, we'll go by those industry sectors that match with our internal systems. Thank you, Liana. Uh, the next question. Can, sorry, can I just add one? Yes. Just one. Sorry, one. Just one piece on that. Just want to put one plug in because I talked about self-identification from the from the perspective of PSPC, but I also want to encourage for any Indigenous business owners um, to ensure that they do register with the Indigenous Business Directory, which is managed by Indigenous Services Canada, because uh, that's a key part of the the Indigenous um, uh, program that I was speaking to earlier. So I just wanted to add that one that one into the conversation as well. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Um, the next one, do you recommend that those who can get Indian status, such as uh, actually it's uh, such as myself, so the, the, the individual, um, since I could be eligible for more grants with it? So do you, do you recommend someone to go to get the Indian status uh, to get or to be eligible for more grants? Oh, Molly, do you want to answer this one? So I think I just actually unintentionally um, probably pre-answered it before yeah. you read the question. <laughs> so again, <laughs> I would I would certainly encourage uh, reaching out to Indigenous Services Canada because that, as especially um, you know that while we. Um, that I think that's a key component um, from a from a government of Canada in terms of directing a procurement. I, I can't speak to grants though. That is outside of the PSPC. I'm, I'm speaking specifically about about the um, you know in terms of the targeted procurement um, opportunities. I think from a from a grants perspective, I would uh, I would actually encourage to turn um, to Indigenous Services Canada and to some of the other more the the grant de uh, departments uh, in that respect. Thanks. Thank you. And we can also uh, find the list of uh, certificate certific organization um, providing certification on the WEX procurement site, and we will uh, share that information with you. Uh, okay, so then the next question, what about for certification, I guess, Liana, for you, what about for certification for women of color? So for a specific one? Uh, for certification women of color, what you can go to. So um, there's obviously the women one, so you can do We Be, We Connect. And there's Kamzi who does Visible Minority. And there's also, you, it's so it could be also that uh, certification. And I'm not fully sure on CCAB, but it might be on their website detailing what the, uh, what is the, the steps or what do they look at when it comes to certification. But the, those three that I mentioned before, I'm, sure that it can work for a certification. Perfect. Um, is there any kind of funding or bids for a bowling alley owner? That's a specific one. <laughs> and Molly is laughing. I don't know if it's because you want to oh. answer. <laughs> 
I can't, I'm, I can't speak to any, any, any funding, I'm afraid, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not sure we can go into details, but um, I guess we will just encourage you to go to the links that we are provided in the chat box. And then uh, we can also take back this question. Well, we can take back this question. Uh, Okay, just three questions left. So can you share some contact information and the website we need to register and how do we follow up with you? I guess following up with you directly will be... I guess we'll go with LinkedIn <laughs> messages there. LinkedIn directly, okay. And then we have shared uh, the website so you can find that. Uh, the, yes, so please email this information. Don't worry about it. We will send you a follow-up email with all the links that we provided today. And then there is one question for Guilain. Will there be an indigenous set aside function on the scale-up application? Uh, it's, it's tiny, we're working on it. Um, and and uh, I could not announce it, but uh, yes, we're working on it. I could I say something, one thing? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. This conversation is showing how challenging that could be for for entrepreneur to find the information that is at many different places. That's interesting, uh, and uh, it's it's a great insight for us government to think about how more cohesively. And I'm I'm not sure me and Molly and Liana tomorrow will start working again closely. Let's resolve that problem. I, but I, I just want to emphasize that the reality of the entrepreneur is. Okay, okay, you say that, you say that, you say that, but is there a way so as, as the entrepreneur to facilitate my life finding the information? I, I just want to emphasize that. So yeah, actually, I, I, maybe I could do a tidbit on this. So there is gonna be something that's coming out, I believe in July, there's a, they're creating a, a website. So I'm, I'm not sure if my colleagues use these websites, but for BDC, when we have public opportunities, we post it on Merck's. And then I know that there's other organizations that use buy and sell. They're creating a single point of access where wherever we all post the, our opportunities that are public, they're going to have it on one platform. So this should be coming. They predicted in July of 2022, but I think it may have been delayed a bit. So that that's going to be coming soon, hopefully, that that's going to help. Um, but I do agree with Guilain that it, it, we are all telling our, everybody to like, go look at our websites and everything. So who knows, maybe Guilain might come and put a new app that we're all going to join in. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We'll, we'll all be like, let's give insight. And Guilain, Guilain will like, we're it. waiting on you. <laughs> she, she seems to be the one who's more agile and creating these uh, new the, new things. So uh, we'll, we'll probably go help her on it. Yes, I I think so. I think so. Um, and then, yes, the two other questions are really related to, uh, okay, there is one, can you share some grants information as well? Uh, that's very broad. So I guess if you have a comment, please go ahead. Otherwise, I, uh, I don't have information on grants, yes. unfortunately. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. And, and I just want to emphasize that all the links will be shared to all the registrants and we will make sure to have links uh, for each uh, panelist. Each link that they mentioned will be in the email. So that concludes our today's session. So I wanna thank you, thank you uh, our panelists for first of all joining us, but also giving us so much information. That was an excellent panel discussion and very important information shared. Um, if you have any questions, please send us an email at diwec at uh, and we look forward to respond to any of your questions. Please note, as I've mentioned, that a copy of the recording and links will be shared with attendees in the following days. In the meantime, to learn more about WEC, the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub, head on over our website, WEC.ca, and I know that my colleague Kramjit is uh, putting all the links there. And if you would like to connect with women entrepreneurs throughout Canada by posting an ask or a give, feel free to check our new uh, sharing platform. So that's it for today. Uh, we have two other um, procurement webinars coming and the next one is June 1st. It's related and, and focused on uh, tr trade agreements and also Canada's uh, obligations. So you can definitely uh, register for this uh, upcoming session. And it's already four o'clock. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, the 
thank you to the team for putting together this beautiful webinar and uh, have a wonderful afternoon.